Hi, this is Brian from the Team Password team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start and configure your Team Password account. Let's get started by creating your trial. From here, I'll enter my company's name and my business email address. On the screen, I'll enter my name, which is how I'll be referred to in the product, and I'll create a master password. This is the password that you'll use to log into Team Password. We recommend making it secure, long, and unique. When in doubt, if you have a password format that you like to use, or if you think you'd like to add a little bit of extra complexity to your password, maybe try repeating it once or twice more, uh, which will give you additional length, which is really helpful from a security perspective. Team Password has an onboarding feature, which will allow us to go through, specify what type of logins we'd like to store. Logins are what we call the username and password combinations in the system. So we can look at that quickly. We can enter our people to invite here. We can create our groups here. Here's a number of groups, which I think are pretty reasonable defaults. And then we can add our people to each of the groups. This is a really fast way to get started and get your initial configuration in place. From here, we'll ask you if you'd like to download the browser extension, uh, which I have installed and we'll show at the end of this video. Uh, but you can also just jump directly to your dashboard. Step two of getting your team password account set up is creating your groups. In order to manage your groups, click on your email in the upper right hand corner and then click to manage your team. Then you'll be able to select groups on the left hand side. Since I created four groups during the initial onboarding process, you'll see them here. You can also add additional groups clicking this button in the upper right hand corner. I'll take just a quick moment to talk about which groups you might want to create. If you manage logins for a third party company, Creating a group for that third party company is a great way to keep everything organized. For example, if you are a marketing consultancy or any sort of business that does work on behalf of clients, it's a great idea to create a group for that client. That way you can manage all of their logins in one place and also manage who on your team should or shouldn't have access to that client's information. Even if you don't have clients, every company can benefit from having a group built around each department. This allows you to add all those specific logins to that department, and it's pretty easy to determine who belongs to what group. In this case, if we hire somebody new to the development team or the marketing team, we can simply add them to the group here, and we'll know that they'll have access to all the development or marketing passwords, whatever passwords they need to do their job. Just to show, I'll create a new group for a client. I'll go here to add a group. I'll name it after the client, and I'll click Save. Here we go, I have a new group. Step three to getting team password set up is to invite other people to your team. So I'll go back here and click on people and then I'll click to invite my team. Now you see here you have the ability to enter the person's email, uh, specify their permission level, either they are a member, which means they can see and edit the logins that you give them access to, but they can't add other people, uh, they can't create groups. Um, and you can add them to groups initially. And that's why we always recommend to get your initial group set up. That way, when I add a new person and I make Mary an admin, I can also specify uh, that Mary's on the development team uh, and she's also uh, does some stuff with our accounting. There we go. Now, when I send the invitation, Mary will get invited and she'll have access to all the different accounts that we've shared in those groups. Speaking of which, now we need to add some logins. From the dashboard, we can add logins to any of the groups that I'm a member of. So let's create a new login. Let's make it our company's Twitter account. So I've entered in the name, the URL, and the username and password. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the URL will help the browser extension work better if you do that. But the only field that's actually required is the name. So I've entered in our username and password. You can also enter in notes here, which is also encrypted and can convey additional information. Uh, to other people on the team. If you've ever had somebody ask you for a password and you gave them the password, and then you also felt compelled to give them some additional information about the account to make sure that they knew what they were doing, you can put that information right here in the notes field. Whoever has access to the account also has access to the notes. So I'll just add the helpful note here that Twitter is public, just to make sure nobody makes a mistake there. And then I will add it to the marketing group. Again, because we've invited people, we've added them to marketing group, Everybody on the marketing team will now have access to the Twitter account because I've added it to the marketing group. This is the process for adding logins. One of the reasons why we do this step after inviting people is because anybody can add a login to a group that they're a member of. So it's not up to you as the person who's signing up to add 100% of the logins. 
even though you'll probably do most of them if our data is correct. The people that you invite can also help add the logins that they have to make sure that team password gets as complete as possible, as quickly as possible. Finally, as the last step, I just want to show how people generally use team password. So I'm going to use team password to log into our company Twitter account. So I'm going to navigate to Twitter sign in page. People generally log in with team password one of two ways. About half of our customers will keep the dashboard open here. They will browse over and they will click copy on the username, tab back, paste, tab over, copy, tab back and paste. This is pretty straightforward and very little room for error. And people are happy to have a little team password tab either open or maybe they've pinned it to the side. That way it's always there so they can quickly move back and forth, search for logins that they need and copy and paste it over. The way the other half of our customer base uses team password is through our browser extensions. In order to log into this Twitter account, they will click on the browser extension in the upper right hand corner. We'll see that because we entered twitter.com as the URL in the login, uh, it sees that we're on twitter.com and has pulled that to the top of the list. A lot of our customers like marketing agencies will have lots of logins for each individual site that they're on. So this is really helpful that it pulls it to the top of the list and you can still access all the other logins that you have below the list. So here I'm going to either click on the login here and that's going to fill in the username and password, or you can operate just like the dashboard, go into the browser extension and click on this I here. And then you can copy and paste the information from here. This is really useful. If you ever run into a login form that team password doesn't automatically fill, you can fill it this way and definitely let us know the site that you had issues on so we can get that corrected. From here, you should be up and running with team password. Please let us know if you have any issues or any questions along the way. We're here to help. Thanks.